Thank you so much for your insights, Ambassador Lipstadt, and for being such a good friend to ADL. As we will be hearing today, the Abraham Accords are such an important development for the Middle East and for efforts to normalize ties between Israel and neighboring Arab and Muslim countries. I know firsthand how transformative it has been. I come to ADL as a former Israeli diplomat who served twice at the Israel missions in the Gulf, years before the Abraham Accords were signed. At that time, this cooperation was secret, under the surface. With the 2020 agreement, this collaboration based on shared values and strategic priorities went public, enabling the flowering of not just official bilateral engagement, but more significantly, of people-to-people -people relationships. At the most basic level, the Abraham Accords change our understanding of what is possible between Arabs and Israelis, Muslims and Jews. As some of you may know, my son, who is now 10 years old, was born in the UAE and is believed to be the first Israeli citizen to be born in the Gulf region. He can hear you now, so you can be louder, it's okay. <laughs> At the time, this was seen as an anomaly as Israelis were largely prevented from living in the region. But today, after the Accords, we have seen tens of thousands of Israelis welcome as visitors and residents in the UAE, Bahrain, Morocco, and other countries a truly historic and indeed a world-altering development. <laughs> ADL, which had for several years been engaging behind the scenes with the Gulf governments, was proud to be invited by the UAE to partner on the Manara Center for Regional Coexistence in Abu Dhabi, which is focused on educational programming across the Middle East and Southeast Asia, aimed at promoting peace and prosperity through coexistence. While we celebrate one year of the Manara Center, we all hope that in the near future, Israelis will be similarly welcome in other places across the Gulf and the broader region. And ADL will be invited to participate in additional partnerships with additional countries joining the Abraham Accords and normalizing ties with Israel. As we think globally, this is a good time to welcome the leaders of the J7 Task Force to Never Is Now. ADL initiated the J7 Task Force for Combating Global Antisemitism last year, so the larger seven Jewish communities outside Israel can collaborate to fight antisemitism across borders and around the world. ADL is also grateful that in the audience today, there are leaders of not just the J7, but 50 Jewish community leaders from around the world. So the lessons and insights we've gotten from this stage and from the breakouts will help fight antisemitism, not just here in the United States, but in dozens of other countries. And one more international note. Earlier this week, ADL rolled out the ADL Global Atlas, an important new resource that thanks to ADL International Alliances serves as a one-stop shop for antisemitism related information. The map that you see here provides quick and direct access to data points that provide comprehensive overview of the state of antisemitism in specific countries, regions, and continents. So be sure to go to ADL.org to check that out.